Hi kids. Okay. Greatest films of all time. Number 64. Uh, from 1975. I'm going to butcher this. So I apologize. Because I'm not French. Uh, Jeanne Delmen. 23. Commerce Quay. Uh, 108. Brussels. That is the title of the film. Uh, directed by Chantal Ackerman. Starring Delphine Sigrid. Um, filmed with an all-female crew. So... What is this film? Um, it could be, has been called a feminist film. It has been called a slow cinema. Uh, if those are things that put you off, all right, fine. Not everything's for everyone, uh, but you should give films a chance sometimes. Anyways, um, so Ackerman, this was her second feature film. Um, she had directed some shorts. Uh, she got, I believe, a grant from the Belgian government to film this. Um, and it is a tale of a mother, housewife, single mother. Uh, it's her day-to-day -day life, her chores, over the course of three days. Ackerman wanted to show, um, she wanted to give value to the things that other films don't show uh she wanted to film it in a way that other films would not so a lot of the film is um just a single shot there's no close-ups there's not a lot of editing uh normally the camera will sit in a location um and uh your character will move about in, throughout the room um sometimes leaving the room uh, sometimes we'll follow her out of the room uh, but not necessarily into every room. There's uh, the bedroom we may not enter till the end of the film. Um, uh, it's giving value to the monotony. It's building this world. Its uh, goal is to make you experience, um, make you feel that point of view, right? Make you to re relate to the character. That's the goal of the film. Should be of any film, um, maybe. Anyways, so uh, it does slowly build over the course of three days. It's, I think, 201 minutes. It's a long film, but it builds to something. It builds to a climax. There is a payoff. It's a car chase! No car chase, but there is a payoff. Uh, yeah, so uh, all-female crew. Um, so this is a film that uh, 2022... Sight and Sound, BFI, their list of 100 Greatest Films. This was at the top of the list. Uh, there was a certain segment of the population um, that has not even seen or heard of this film that were a little bit surprised that it was number one. Uh, there was uh, certain people making accusations that perhaps its rise was a little too sudden. Paul Schrader. Uh, saying that maybe it felt like somebody's thumb was on the scales, um, sort of um, nudging feminist ideals to the top of the list. Just You can go look at the lists, look at who voted for them, see it on the lists. Uh, so let's get to the list. So in that regard to the thumb on the scale, 10 years ago, so they do their poll every 10 years. So the last one, or this one, was 20, 20, 2012, and in that, it was number 35 on the critics list. So it was on the list, it was pretty high, 35. So it's not like it came out of the top 100 and all of a sudden it's number one. It was there 10 years ago. 10 years is quite a long time for, um, perspective on things to change. So this year, 2022, last year, I guess, uh, it was number one on the critics list. So it rose from 35 to one. Uh, and on the director's list, it came to number four. So it's not just critics uh, pushing an agenda. Directors also voted for this film, came to number four. That's why overall on their list of the combination of the two lists, it was number one. And that's why on this list, it came in at number 64. 
not on a lot of other lists. Certainly not going to be on the AFI list because it's not American. Um, but yeah, so that is it. Number 64, 1975. Haven't seen it. Maybe go check it out. See what it's about. Give it a try. Maybe it's your taste. Maybe it's your not. It's your not. It's not. If it's not, that's fine. Anyways, I uh, rambled on enough about this film. Just go watch it. Thank you. Like, subscribe.